Hey, sports better. Yes, you. Guess what? Your favorite sports book, BetUS.com, is back for its 28th year of NFL action. So, here's what you got to do. Just click the link below in my description box and sign up today. BetUS.com, where the game begins. Long enough to cover the subject and short enough to keep it interesting. Welcome to Out Up My League. I'm Nick Diaz. All that build up for nothing. All that tension and no payoff. All that foreplay and, well, you get the point. Brian Kelly was asked about the starting quarterback position. Today was his deadline for an announcement, which he said we're going to have to make an announcement pretty soon by Monday or Tuesday. And we've made a decision, but I'm not going to announce it publicly. Certainly, I think everybody here wants to know who the quarterback is. I get that. But I think it's a tactical advantage for us not to announce it. So I'm going to hold that announcement because I think it gives us a tactical advantage for not playing. Look, Florida State played a game. That's an advantage for them, Um, having the opportunity to play. um, The advantage for us is that we haven't played. Look, how many times did I say it the last two weeks? It's a tie. It's a tie. And after watching Florida State play Duquesne on Saturday, honestly, do any of you really care? who takes the literal first snap if both of them are going to play. Once again, Brian Kelly said today that... Certainly we don't have to change the play calling. There's not a dramatic difference between the two when it comes to play calling. So you can imagine that you know when we're talking about both quarterbacks, this is a, this is a 1A and 1B. This is not a 1 and a 2. And, and both of them, you know, obviously are going to contribute this year. Look, it's not going to affect their game plan. It's 1A, 1B. Both are mobile quarterbacks. One is just more mobile than the other, and one's got a stronger arm than the other. But I believe him when he says, in general, you know, the play sheet won't change. It's just the who's going to take the first snap fascination. Big whoop. He takes the first snap. I've made my case as to why it's probably going to be Jaden Daniels who takes the literal first snap because the tie goes to the upperclassmen. That's why. Which all signs say that it probably still will be. I did a video in more in depth as to why they should, why Brian Kelly will. You can see in the corner for that video if you missed it. But the point is, if both are going to play, and he's been saying that for two weeks, he said that again today, and FSU knows that he's going to, Why does he refuse to name a starter publicly then? What's the point? Well, it's for competitive advantage, Nick. He said so. FSU has played, but the advantage is is that they haven't seen LSU play. Really? Really? So if both quarterbacks are going to play, do you really need a competitive advantage to script the opening drive? Really? So the opening drive, that's your only competitive advantage that you're looking for? Well, Brian Kelly is doing this because he doesn't want one of the other quarterbacks to transfer. Oh my god. Okay. That argument I've never bought into. So you're telling me that a quarterback who knows they are going to play in a, let's just call it a dual quarterback setting for semantic reasons, they know this, but they're going to transfer right now, a week before the season, and not be able to play at all For the rest of the season, no matter what, instead of splitting first team reps with a possible chance to win the job outright this season, all because they didn't take the first snap of the first game, players can be sensitive, but that just makes no goddamn sense. Also, the quarterbacks already know who's taking the first snap. I guarantee you they've told them, and also if they haven't told them, they have to practice the opening drive Script the opening first 15 plays, that starts tomorrow. I mean, the transfer portal argument really made no sense outside of Brennan leaving for the summer. So I don't get it. But you know what? I stand before you humbled. I don't really have a reasonable explanation as to why he's not announcing the quarterback starter other than maybe it's just as simple as Brian Kelly being a normal paranoid football coach. Maybe it's like, well, you know, those first 15 plays, I want to get a good head start. I do. Maybe maybe that's it. But if you want me to give you a fun conspiracy theory as to why, maybe Brian Kelly does have a two-quarterback system on the opening drive. Maybe both go out there on the first play. Garrett Nussmeyer plays quarterback. Jaden Daniels plays running back or vice versa. One of them hands off to the other. 
and throws back to the other for a double halfback pass. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, that's not going to happen. But either way, I don't see an advantage. But I'm not getting paid $100 million to not announce the starting quarterback. Brian Kelly is. Now, one advantage people think LSU does have is that Brian Kelly and Brian Polian played Florida State last year when they were at Notre Dame. No, not not necessarily. I think there's some pluses and minuses there. Um, like I said, I think we've got the advantage that they don't have any film on us. Um, you've got a new head coach. You've got new coordinators. You know, that in itself, there's the uncertainty of them knowing what to expect. You know, so there is a bit of a trade-off there. Eh, it's the same argument as Florida State gets to play week zero and LSU doesn't. It's not a significant advantage. The team with the best players, with the best game plan, and the best preparation wins. Just like every other football game that will be played this week. By the way, speaking of preparation, LSU will have a very different preparation than most teams in the past. See, before LSU and most teams in the country do this, the night before they stay in the hotel, they do walkthroughs in the hotel ballroom that morning, and they stay there all day. They eat breakfast there. They eat lunch there. They're cooped up until it's time to leave, I think, two or three hours before the game starts. Most teams in college and professional do this exact thing. Not Brian Kelly. I like to work our team out on game day uh, when it's a night game. So we'll go to the Dome. Um, we'll work the guys out. We'll move them around. Um, we'll work up a sweat uh, in the morning. And... Um, Again, I, I don't like to keep the guys uh, locked up in the hotel room all day when we have a night game. So He's going to do this all for night games. I love this. I cannot tell you how much I love this. Players have always, always voiced how much they hate the day of the game because they are cooped up in a hotel going stir-crazy, nothing to do, nowhere to go. Some coaches even turn off the TV. Some coaches, you know, make them watch TV for other games. Whatever. Again, this was one of those, well, it's the way we always did it because my coach did it that way and his coach before him did it that way. So I'm going to keep doing it. Here's an idea. Get them out. Get them moving. Get them in the sunlight. This is one of those old school paranoid coaches things from way back when when nobody bothered to challenge it with science. Like... Maybe we should give them a warm-up and burn that nervous energy in the morning with a light sweat? I don't know. Just an idea. Either way, I like LSU's chances to win this coming Sunday in the Superdome. Regardless of who takes the first snap at quarterback, regardless if Brian Kelly coached against Florida State last year, and regardless of what LSU does the morning of when they're in the hotel room. Thanks for listening to Out of My League. If you like what you heard, be sure to like, share, and subscribe, or follow me on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok in the description link below.